So for those of you who do not know, I actually own one of the prior e-ink Kindle devices, and I say prior because this one you can no longer get, but I consider myself to be very lucky. The reason is because, um, let me move the screen so you can see me a little better. Um, the reason is because it's got a built-in keyboard and it's got speech output. As far as I know, the current lineup of e-ink devices does not have this. I've also got this really nice case with it that's got this pop-up light. As long as there's power to the Kindle, then I can open up this little flap on the front, power on the Kindle, and have some extra light without it being the overly harsh backlight that can sometimes be a problem for extended use for somebody like myself who has severe photosensitivity. The only book that I remember purchasing, actually the first book I remember purchasing, I've I, I, I purchased since a couple of others that are, that are on Amazon's cloud uh, reading service, but the one book that I remember purchasing was an academic book, it was qualitative research, and it was for a class I was taking to finish up my graduate studies. If I had gotten that book hard copy, it would have been um, considerably more expensive by at least 20 or $30 than it was on the Amazon Kindle store. Not to mention it would not have been enlarged. That's what I love about Amazon's book services. The books themselves are considerably cheaper in a lot of instances than the hard copy. Um, they are also dynamically adaptable in the sense that I can have them enlarged or I can have them read to me. This is something that you do not get with a print book and if you were to try to go through one of the specialty services like Learning Ally or, or the NLS, you might have to wait a while to get your book. I remember back in my undergrad years it took them six months, the majority of the semester, to get my art book ready. So. There are definitely major, major advantages to Amazon's ecosystem, but it actually goes beyond books for me. About a year ago this coming September, I made my very first Amazon purchase using a prepaid card because I wasn't comfortable using my own card yet um, to get this. Now for those of you who have not seen it, if you go to my videos on the Atomic Digital Talking Watch, this is it. This is the very first purchase I ever made on Amazon. They were supposed to have it to me within one week. They had it to me within four days. And that's been my experience with a number of other things that I've ordered on Amazon. Everything's been early. Um, for my graduation, in total from various family members, I got $200 in Amazon gift money. And boy howdy, did I go to town on that. Um, if you take a look at my video on the first G-Shock, I bought that from Amazon. It's also my first solar-powered watch. Very same experience. Um, honestly, nothing to complain about. We even went ahead and purchased a new answering machine for the house from Amazon. And more recently, I decided to pick up one of these little gold androids. Um... But no, my experience with Amazon has been nothing but positive. They've been early. They've been very, um, very prompt. I've been always, always been able to track my orders. They've had good pricing. A lot of the reviews that I've read um, come from honest people and not companies trying to, you know, spoon feed you their product. What's more, it does lend itself to a much easier shopping ex experience for somebody who uses either magnification or screen reading. The reason being that, um, I'll give you an example. Yesterday I went to a local electronics store and I have a built-in app on my phone that acts as a screen magnifier. Trouble, or a uh, digital video uh, magnifier. And what that does, what I allowed, that allowed me to do was I was able to take the magnifier and hold it over the pricing information of something I was looking at. 
The problem was the pricing information was located far enough to away to where even a maximum magnification in order to get it in close enough for me to see I had to lean in somewhat and I don't like to do that um, because I do have bad balance and were it not for the table in front of me supporting me I could have probably fallen over <coughs> excuse me um but no I just think that overall Amazon's experience has been nothing but wonderful and recently excuse me if you do a search for Amazon Kindle Fire review semicolon AFB all caps access world that is their assistive technology review magazine think of it as a PC world but specifically for people who use assistive technology hardware and software they reviewed and one of the beautiful things is that more mainstream devices are becoming accessible they reviewed the Amazon Kindle Fire which recently had um, screen reader adaptations put to it now the Amazon Kindle Fire is an Android based device but it does not run Android that you might think it what it does is it runs fire OS Amazon's own proprietary software stack on top of Android but there are a number of really nice benefits for people who are um, really big on shopping on Amazon like I am one of the big things is this Mayday service and the Mayday service was completely accessible and in the access world review you're gonna love this if you're using the screen reader on the Amazon Kindle then the person who supports you who is who is helping you out has to use the screen reader as well even if they are fully sighted they have to do the same exact thing you're doing if you're a screen reader user they need to use the screen reader too when it comes to showing you stuff that in my book is just phenomenal I love that recently they announced the fire phone now you're probably looking six hundred and forty nine dollars there's something you need to be aware of without a service plan and that's because I already have a prepaid plan with AT&T now you're probably wondering for those of you who do not know the fire phone is about the size um, from the dimension from the dimensions and the screen size I'm going to guesstimate probably about the size of a Galaxy S4 maybe a little smaller and the device has a 4.7 inch screen and essentially five separate cameras on the front there's a camera immediately to the right of the earpiece that's your standard front facing camera that you probably know from your iPhone or your Google Android device then you've got four different cameras here in the corners what that does is that allows the device to know where your face is in relation to it and what that has opened up is basically what Amazon's calling dynamic perspective which is if you have the device in front of you and you tilt it it will scroll automatically if you move the device in from the right hand if you if you t turn the device over to the right or the left it will bring in a menu you don't have to worry about tapping or finding on-screen control so much and then I got to thinking about this the software development kit for dynamic perspective is available the device at the, the, the Amazon the, time is now 4 the device itself won't be on sale till July but the software development kit for dynamic perspective is available now and they could integrate dynamic perspective into their apps nothing has been said yet as I understand it this is running a slightly newer version of the fire OS nothing has been said yet but I have been wondering in my mind about how dynamic perspective could be used to aid in accessibility maybe navigating for instance rather than having to find an on-screen button to locate the menus or a button that might not be labeled let's say for instance the button to get to the menus is not labeled but the menus themselves are labeled if they have dynamic perspective enabled with the screen reader if you can if we can get that to work I think that could be a major um, plus for 
for people who use the screen reader or people like myself who use the screen magnification. For instance, they could tell where I am in the um, in proximity to the phone and say highlight a word. They they would know where I am in terms of where I'm you know reading. Hi, maybe they could highlight a word, enlarge a word, enlarge a paragraph. I just see a lot of possibilities for this. Now, a lot of people in the techie community are saying that this is probably going to be eaten up by people who are very heavy Amazon shoppers. And I don't doubt that. But what I love about Amazon, again, has to do with the shopping experience. Um in terms of not having to worry about going to the store and looking at very tiny print on various devices. Now I'm still an advocate for actually trying something in the store before buying, but I feel that when it comes to actually buying something, I can see myself shifting more and more to Amazon services. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Are you a regular uh, Amazon user? What do you guys think? Also, what do you guys think of my thoughts on the Fire Phone? Thank you for watching. Comments are welcome. And have a nice day.